<laughs> Perfect. Good. Uh, Are we yeah. live? Yes. Welcome to Divinity. Yes. Urgil Sin 2. Sorry for the sound Perfect. issues. Uh, Hopefully yeah. we've gotten them Welcome sorted out. Divinity. Urgil Sin 2. Maybe Sorry for the sound time. issues. Hopefully we've gotten them sorted out. Three. Maybe. Two. Hopefully. Ready. One timer. Oh. Three. Two. Right. One. So, for the builds that we both have chosen, both of us have decided to go as undead so, humans. For the builds um, that we both have chosen, something both of us we do have decided to go of, as uh, undead un humans. Um, this is something we do because of uh, undead being able to survive death fog and poison attacks, which we'll be using at some point during the run. And then we've both taken the skills haste, polymorph, sorry, haste, uh, tentacle slap, and... Invisibility. What? Invisibility, yeah. Chameleon Clock, I guess, is the actual name of it. Yeah, there are, there are a bunch of abilities in this game that sort of do the same thing, but are just called different things. Later in the run, we're also going to be getting some other abilities as well, called Tactical Retreat and Cloak and Dagger, but they're from two different schools of magic, but they do the exact same thing. Right. But, and here I'll slap to trigger the cutscene faster. Just skips having to go over a bunch of stuff. And also we both got well rested, except Crow didn't get well rested, so he's knocked down now. Perfect. Normally you get the uh, the bedroll that I picked up in the very beginning. If you use the bedroll to become well rested, you just completely negate the knockdown animation there, but yeah. I think I was a little bit the too slow. The knockdown just removes yeah. your... So here on my screen, while Walrus goes upstairs to ready a grenade, I'm going to take this barrel and then use it to clip into this room that you normally can't. Uh, get ready to throw. Throw! Yep. In this room, I'm picking up three barrels of Death Fog. Now, Death Fog is the thing that we discussed earlier, which undead are able to survive, but every other living creature will instantly die when they come into contact with it. That includes bosses as well. So, we're going to be using these barrels to just throw them at bosses and just instantly kill them in one hit. Yeah. But there are several fights where we're going to be using it throughout the entire game. So at a later point, we're going to be doing a dupe where we get additional barrels on top of that. Yep. Also, the reason why I need to throw that Molotov there is because for whatever reason, when you damage those NPCs, the level just ends. I guess it's like a weird backup failsafe for the devs or something. It's probably, it's probably if one of the children dies somehow during the fight, then it's like, oh no. Something went wrong, just end level. Yeah, just, just, just end it. the level, let's cut it. But yeah, here my character is over encumbered because I'm carrying all the Beth Death Fog barrels. So I'm going to haste Walrus and then he's just going to start running towards the fort. Why did you send them to me? What are you doing? I sent you one. No, you sent me both. Oh, <laughs> oops. <laughs> Big time Perfect loss. <laughs> So yeah, I'm going to be stacking two of the barrels here at the beach because I'm going to be picking them up later because as you just saw, if you have more than two barrels in your inventory at a time, you get slowed down. So Warris is just right now making his way over to Fort Joy while I will be joining him in a second. Yeah, and the thing about hasting is that if you just haste yourself, you lose about the same amount of time as you will save with the no, don't haste in this. Yes. Yeah, the reason why he's in going invis here is because when he goes through these people here, it normally triggers a little cutscene that you have to do. But if you just go invisible first, then you can just run past them. Pretty much every cutscene and NPC dialogue can be uh, Waypoint. can be skipped by just going invisible. So here, Walrus yeah. triggers the waypoint, so I can just instantly warp to him. And then the moment that I warp in, I just immediately haste him, so he can just run even faster. Yeah, and here I'll do a clip to get through this area really really fast basically the fastest way you can get out of this first prison area this is a and the thing i was thing i was trying to explain about haste is that if you haste yourself you lose about the same amount of time as you would save because the animation stops you completely so it's only beneficial to haste the other person whenever only one whenever he's going to be slower than you yeah You'll be seeing us do this a lot actually throughout the run, both hasting each other, but also just splitting up during the run. So right here, Walrus is going to a waypoint at a further part of the game. Meanwhile, I'll be killing these crocodiles that are down on the beach. The reason why I'm doing this is because this specific crocodile that I just looted has a pair of gloves that have the teleportation 
uh, property on them. So I can just get these gloves, and then now Wars hits the waypoint, and then I can just immediately make my way here, grab him, and just throw him over this edge. So it's a lot of splitting up and then sort of joining each other again by grabbing waypoints so we can warp back and forth to each other while we get different things done at the same time. So for this next part, I'm going to be making my way over to Amadeus Sanctuary, which for those who played this game casually, sort of functions as the second home base where there are some shopkeepers and some NPCs that sell spellbooks. And at the same time, Walrus is going to be making his way over to the final boss of the first act, even though we're still level, what, two, three at this point? Something like that. I don't know. But yeah, we're going to be cheesing the last boss, as you could probably imagine. But before we do anything here in the Shrine of Amadia, I'm going to be hitting the waypoint. But before I hit this, Walrus should be getting the waypoint for the abandoned camp right in front of the boss. So I can warp to his waypoint, teleport him right into, the, uh, into the base so he can start the fight. And then while Walrus does the final boss fight of the first act, I'm going to be doing some shopping at the same time. So here... Myself here. He hits himself, I throw him over to the other side, over here, and give him the teleport gloves so he can use them. Yep. Another thing that makes the co-op really handy is that you can email items. Give me the one barrel. Oh, yeah, sh uh, sh I'm in a bad dialogue. Uh, I'm in a... What is this dialogue? I can't leave this dialogue! <laughs> Wait, don't you have a barrel? No. Did I you send both back? Why did you send them both back? Because <laughs> I panicked. <laughs> Alright, so normally <laughs> you should just have one barrel there. Good. I'm very busy for the moment, so uh so I don't look in at my inventory until here normally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But, so there I grab Alexander out of his idle walk. Put him in the death fog, he instantly dies, and then I can send Crow bags, all of his good stuff, which he can then sell and buy us the teleporting abilities with. And the teleports are gonna be extremely broken, so. Yeah, right now we're running on a um, an older patch of the game. Um, I don't know what patch the current game is up to. It's up to like seven or eight patches or something like that. But we're running uh, on patch... There's the enhanced edition now. Well, yeah, so. there's a whole bunch of stuff. But we're running on the third patch, which allows us to do a glitch where if you have the scoundrel ability cloak and dagger or the huntsman ability tactical retreat, you can jump a really, really long distance. But there's a glitch where if you target an area within the range of the normal jump, and then immediately just drag your mouse super far off screen, you will actually teleport your your character to where your mouse is, like outside the screen, nice. rather than within the normal range. So yeah, right now I'm just basically shopping, buying some things, and uh, selling the items that War sent to me while he kills the boss. And by kills, you mean let the NPCs do all the work and then just teleport the remaining NPCs into the death fog? Yeah, I mean... So here I'm actually gonna use a fireball. So this is the point in the run where I take out my phone and just scroll through Twitter and find good memes. Right, so be sure to add Crowbacks some memes right now. Yeah. Number one meme will be read aloud on stream. That's a lie, it won't. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> if you're wondering why I'm standing still here is because this vendor will first start selling a, um, a new item that I need when we get to level four. So right now we're level three, but when Walrus kills another enemy or two, then we should get the level that we need. Yes. How's the fight looking over there? It's okay. I just, I was slow. 
Like, I accidentally skipped a turn that I shouldn't have, but it's fine. That one panic moment that you had earlier just put me completely out of the groove. <laughs> yeah. Because I was, like, cancelling some dialogue, and then all of a sudden you were just like, No, give me the barrel! Like, uh, uh, and then, <laughs> and then I hit the wrong option. <laughs> oh, it was so good. This whole run is like a house of cards. You just blow at it and it crumbles. <laughs> it falls over. Also, there's totally not a chance that the run can die in many, many places throughout this. Nah. You have your things. Yeah. So thankfully we have made a whole bunch of backup saves. So just in case things do go south, we do have some saves that we can load up. Also free scrolling the dialogue is strats yeah just bind uh use oh, sorry bind one to scroll wheel and uh yeah do you have the barrels and everything uh yes we have lost many a run <laughs> just a random <laughs> mistake like that it's just like did you remember the things like uh <laughs> uh uh what am i supposed to get again <laughs> But yeah, this is where we're going to be doing some different things. I'm going to be doing a dupe with the barrels here, where you quick save, quick load. I'm ready, by the way. Yep. Saving. This will create a save state where it remembers the death bog barrels that I just put down on the ship. And then when we come back to the ship later, even though I just took the barrels with me again, there's going to be another copy of those additional barrels that we can then use to kill even more enemies with. Meanwhile, Walrus has clipped out of bounds and has actually warped to a different version of the ship that I am on right now. So you think that in the casual playthrough, time is progressing and he's in a fight that's at a later point. It's actually just another ship on the same map. And this is where you can see he uses the death fog that just instantly kills all of these enemies. And the ones that don't instantly die just run in and commit suicide. Yeah. Hopefully. If too many survive that, they can go away and start running around and uh, it'll be bad. And here, Crobax will bless. I'll talk. And then hopefully, if I was quick enough, I can get a, a haste on Walrus here. Oh, you're like a pixel out of my range. Sad. Sad. But yeah, that's just a small optimization you can do. There are a bunch of those throughout the run where if I could just have a second, I can just very quickly haste Walrus as he's on his way somewhere. Because right now he's warping underneath the ship to uh, start a, uh, a dialogue that just ends the rest of the level. Yes. I guess a good thing to point out right now is normally in a casual playthrough, this would take around what, 10 hours maybe to do the first chapter? And we did it in a little bit over 10 minutes? Wow. So you can do a lot of broken things in the speed run at least. I mean, the rest of the run is gonna be even more broken because now we have the teleport abilities. So we can just go wherever we want, basically. That's true. And especially because the level layout is based sort of like the way the ship is where a lot of basements and buildings and everything will actually be within the same map, just next to each other. So, for example, here, I'm going to go pick up our copied barrels that are still here again, even though we already used them. Um, I'm going to go into town and then do a warp. Here's your barrels. Meanwhile, I'm going to kill a demon, so I'm badass like that. He just wants all the XP for himself? Yeah. You're basically Gandalf from Lord of the Rings. It's just you fall down the pit with a Balrog just so you can kill yep. it by yourself. And here again, there's probably be a faster way to go through this dialogue one by one, but I'm just free scrolling everything and then we're done. So I don't have to think. And then I'm gonna place a death fog here, kick it. It's gone. Good. And then just jump out of there. Easy peasy.
Uh, hopefully, all of you guys are staying up on the story here. Yeah. Very this, important. The lore in this game is super deep, and uh, if you can't afford to miss anything, I'll read. Yep. Oh, yeah, in this basement, this is the uh, the place where you sort of need to meet up again. So, at this point, he's already gotten his things done, and he just warps to me. Because during the last um, section of the game, we got two magical pyramids that allow us to teleport to each other. Which really comes in handy, because that means one person can do one of the long-distance teleports. The other player can then teleport to that player, and then immediately do their own jumps. So we can sort of chain the long jump teleports. No, she's running for me. No, no, no come here, man. no, bitch, come here, please. What? You have to talk. Oh, what are the options? One one two two one 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 one. One one two two one 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 one. One one two two. <laughs> yes. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> That happens so sometimes. depending on which of us gets out of the dream first, I think. Yeah, you were slightly how faster. She than decides me. who needs to talk to her. Yeah, usually it's me that's the first one out of the dream, so I have to do the dialogue with her there. So I've sort of memorized what the fastest inputs to do with her is. But I guess Walrus was like slightly faster than me there, so it was him instead. Yeah. Because at that point, uh, Malady just straight up refuses to talk to you. Aren't you supposed to be off? Right here again. Crow will teleport. I walk to him with the pyramid. Then I get up here. I do a teleport here to the other side. There's a ghost nearby. In the fireball zone, that's danger. <laughs> Ooh, I'm almost dead. Big danger. And yeah, now you can see Wars is in a completely different place to where we were just now. And again, that's the same thing where um, the different levels are actually in the same map, so you can just jump between the levels, even though they're super far apart within the levels, or within the game. So we're already finished with uh, Chapter 2, and I believe we're pretty far into Chapter 3 already. Or Act 3, rather. Yep. Oh, hey, I have a turn here. Good. So this is a pretty big fight with Alexander and a whole bunch of the other really important lore NPCs. Now, Bishop Alexander always goes first, and then it's Warris that goes next. Although sometimes this fight glitches out and Warris does not get his turn at all. So these NPCs just get a free turn to just go over and kill us. So Warris is just gonna immediately, when it becomes his turn, just leave the fight and then trigger a cutscene later on in the level by just yep. activating an object. And while all that's happening, I'm trying to hit some of my level ups here. And of course, free scroll through the story, because that's how you go. And here and I need to speed man. I need to attack wars. It's also a very important <laughs> step for the run. Yes, totally. So Warus here is now going to do a, um, a big boss fight against a titan that's going to spawn here in a second. Now I don't want to be in this fight because um, I'm just going to take up another spot on the turn order, plus there's a chance that the titan might attack me. So instead I just completely jump outside the map and I just let Warus do the dirty work. Yeah, and actually two of the uh, avatars of the gods would actually spawn if you were here. And then you would have to also kill yours before the Titan shows up. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's like the one thing we had to figure out for the co-op run. Yeah. Oh. So yeah, here. Break, please. So here's just gonna make use of. No, the... wait. You I didn't slap, slap him. <laughs> oh my god. Maybe this will work actually. It did. Okay, he's dead. It's dead. His. Or he's, not. He's not dead, he's at zero HP! <laughs> Please. Okay. okay good. <laughs> what? <laughs> that was weird. 
That was alright. But hey, that did it. It's... We're, we're done. <laughs> Remember, you Let can jump. Go. So yeah, normally what you want to do there is use the uh, tentacle slap on the uh, the big titan guy. Which uh, will take him out of his little spirit form. And then he goes into his titan form where he will then instantly die to the death fog. But for some reason he death fogged first, then slapped, which just, I don't know. <laughs> just completely bugged him out. Yeah. It's like when you're talking about another thing and you're trying to like... Just... <laughs> Your muscle memory gets all messed up. It's great. But yeah, this run is, I mean, we're kind of far behind, but in terms of how it could have gone, it's actually going pretty well. Yeah, there hasn't been anything like super huge. Yeah, there are a bunch of places in the run, especially in the first 10 minutes with the uh, the worm boss fight where the run can very easily just explode. Oh, I have to talk. Oops. So yeah, here, Morris is again. We're going to warp back to the ship using the waypoint system. And then Warris is going to jump out of bounds to a completely different area. And we're now approaching the uh, the boss room I'm through. of the last uh, of the last act. Oh. So I'm just going to jump over this bridge. Warris gets into a fight, but that's okay, because I'm going to immediately just trigger this, which just gets him out of that fight that he's in. And this is the final boss room of the game. Good. I hasted you. Right, Good. I'm just gonna waste for the. Oh. No, that's bad. This well, is a bad. This is a very bad. bad. So here, Walrus is gonna skip all of this dialogue, and then I'm gonna pick a rather important dialogue choice there. Yes. My character's standing still. Good. <laughs> very nice. If my character picks one during that dialogue choice it'll actually turn all of these enemies against us, and we pretty much need to fight all of them at the same time. But it's yeah, not, if, yeah, the fight will have like two phases. But if I just but press two, the, yeah. they all just we uh, side with you. And yeah. Now this is the final boss. Brachus Rex and his giant Kraken. Now there's a trick that you've probably been seeing us doing throughout the rest of the run. If you quick save and quick load, Whenever any, both player or NPC is taking their turn, it'll just straight up skip their turn. So right there, he quick save, quick saves when the Kraken is doing its breath attack, immediately skipping the Kraken's turn. So now it's Walrus's turn. He's gonna jump over next to uh, Lucian the Divine. He's gonna time warp Lucian, which gives Lucian an extra turn after his turn is ended. He's then gonna run over to Brachus Rex teleport him into the middle of this group of enemies and then you can probably imagine what's gonna happen next all of these npcs right here which are like god level boss npcs are just gonna completely destroy brachus when it's their turn yeah we're basically like noobs at this point still so we can't really do much in these fights yeah if any of the any of the enemies actually decided to target us we would die in one shot yes But yeah, especially Lucian here is really beastly, and that's why you wanna time warp him. Because he gets basically gets two turns on Barakus here, and he's gonna just absolutely demolish him. Nice crit, but a miss. So he missed that attack, but this is where he gets the extra turn, so he can still make up for his mistakes. And here, Crow needs to pick up some dialogue, and I'm just gonna spam through it. That's also a pretty important dialogue choice, because if I yep. pick the wrong dialogue choice there, it actually ends up with the two player characters having to fight against each other, and there's no way to skip it until... And time is coming up right here. No! Go to the end! Character! <laughs> or maybe not. And... Uh, please. And time. Time. War raged on. There we go. Can we get some clap in chat? Arcs remain the same. It's actually an overall very nice run. Nothing went uh, behind the divine. terribly wrong. Yeah. Ended up being a 22.03 in-game time. Would see many more long years of war. Yeah, that's pretty good. 
It's very good. The ancient empire but yeah, the co-op run for this game is uh, very nice, at least also compared to the single-player run. In the single-player run, you pretty much need to do all the things that we've been doing so far just by yourself. So you need to be multitasking with two characters running back and forth. And it also limits some of your options in terms of money making and how you can Just manage your teleports. Her yeah. Under yep. her rule, the Dwarven Kingdom fought for the divine. And her Very good. But yeah, that's uh, a game that takes a hundred hours or more casually in about thirty minutes, actually twenty minutes. And yep. in death. Yeah, I was kind of surprised at how short the run is. <laughs> It's very broken. With After teleport, yeah. it's just game over. <laughs> Alright, yeah, so 2341, oh, 45. Thanks guys for the run. Yeah, hope you all enjoyed. Um, I think, yeah, I think next up we have... Here and there, uh, across the world, what was left of the Black Ring fought up... Oh man, I, I don't have that info on me right now, sorry. Tony Hawk's Underground by Hood 61.